On the 4th of July, our thoughts turn to fireworks and barbecues. We should also pause to acknowledge our basic rights as Americans, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, the right to vote. All too often, we take these freedoms for granted. Little more than 30 years ago, before Martin Luther King led marches across the South, millions of Americans couldn't vote for their elected representatives. Even after getting that right, they faced obstacles in exercising it. But if you think that no one can interfere with an American minority's voting rights, think again. It's happening right here in Orange County. Just a few minutes from downtown Monroe is the village of Kyrgyz Joel, a community of Satmar Hasidim, an ultra-Orthodox Jewish sect. Its religious leadership controls all aspects of life within the village, and dissent is not tolerated. Several hundred dissidents have been expelled from the main synagogue, the location of the village's only polling place. When dissidents go to cast their ballots, they have been greeted with hostile mobs, shouts, shoves, showers of cold water, and signs proclaiming their outcast status. They've tried for years to get officials to move the polling place to a neutral location, with no success. Last fall, 170 of them were allowed to vote in Goshen by absentee ballot, a trip they gladly made due to their fear of voting in their own community. In this month's episode of Orange County Public Affairs Network, we will explore the abuses of power by Curious Joel's religious leadership, which have been well documented by the Times Herald Record, by 60 Minutes, The Village Voice, The Wall Street Journal, and The New York Times. All have spelled out why the Republican-controlled Orange County Legislature and the County Human Rights Commission allow these abuses to continue. They are beholden to a block vote of thousands. Around the world, 100,000 Satmar Hasidim abide strictly by the Old Testament, rabbinical law, and customs of 19th century Europe. Many live in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. 12,000 of them live in Curious Joel. No one drives a car on Saturdays, the Jewish Sabbath. There are no bars, movies, or TV. In the village stores, you can't buy newspapers or magazines from the outside world. People speak Yiddish and attend daily prayer services. Hundreds of boys and girls come up from Williamsburg to study at one of KJ's parochial schools. Most youth marry at 17 or 18 with the help of a matchmaker. In Curious Joel, there is no separation between religion and government. The Grand Rabbi picks the officials who run village affairs, the schools, and the planning board. His word is literally law. Traditionally, elections have rubber stamped the rabbi's choices. During the 1980s, many became dissatisfied with him. Rabbi Judah Weingarten was one of the first to speak out. While American law guards our right to publicly disagree with our leaders, in the Satmar community, it's not only a big deal, it's dangerous. In June 1990, Rabbi Judah Weingarten was beaten within an inch of his life. Here's a report from the Channel 9 Evening News. Members of the Williamsburg Hasidic community are outraged. Some are calling for revenge. Matthew Schwartz is here now with details. Matthew? It's an unusual story, Rollin. 25,000 members of the ultra-Orthodox Satmar sect live in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. About 20% of them reportedly don't like the chief rabbi. Last night, one of the main dissenters was attacked, so he'd shut up. Judah Weingarten is a man of peace, but a victim of violence. The 41-year-old Hasidic rabbi suffered head and facial injuries when he was punched and kicked by what police say was a gang of 15 to 20 Hasidic youths. It happened outside the rabbi's Bedford Gardens apartment building Tuesday night. A neighbor, John Perez, says he saw the gang approach the rabbi. They were arguing and stuff. And then after five, like five minutes later, they just started beating him and kicking him. And he started screaming and we all came over and we tried to stop him and they told us to mind our business because it was in our business and they had 
They had every right to do that. What makes what happened here unusual is that the victim and his suspected attackers are members of Williamsburg's usually close-knit Satmar sect. Their legendary leader, Rabbi Joel Teitelbaum, died in 1979 at the age of 93. His nephew, Rabbi Moses Teitelbaum, is the current leader, but some usually camera-shy Satmars say Teitelbaum is greedy and puts himself above the Talmud, the authoritative body on Jewish law. After Weingarten criticized Teitelbaum in the local Jewish newspaper in April, Weingarten's car was set on fire. Now a group of fellow dissenters say Teitelbaum was behind the attacks on Weingarten. Moses Teitelbaum, his people orders. In his house, you know, maybe not his director, but he wants to do it because he, he holds a couple of speeches. A lot of people uh, terrorize speeches. He gave terrorist speeches to his congregation? Yeah. Meanwhile, Upstate in Curious Joel, Rabbi Moses had installed his own followers as town leaders and set up his son Aaron as chief rabbi. A group who didn't like the way rabbi was doing things set up a new school for their children. In a Passover 1989 speech, Rabbi Moses ordered his followers to shout, Infidel, out! To its supporters. When Joseph Waldman decided to run for the newly formed Curious Joel School District in 1989, he was the only one of eight candidates not endorsed by the Grand Rabbi. Hundreds of yeshiva students marched on Waldman's home. He claimed that phone conversations between him and Rabbi Weingarten were illegally taped and sold at a Williamsburg electronic store. Supporters of the Grand Rabbi kicked off a new election day tradition. A hundred of them packed the basement social hall of the main synagogue, which is the sole polling place for Curious Joel for the entire day. In 1992, the Monroe Town Supervisor, Mike Frericks, and the town board called it a religious dispute among the Hasidim and none of the town's business. They went to the Orange County Board of Elections. State law lets them move a polling place if they find it unsuitable or unsafe. But the board said they couldn't find any, quote, proof that voters were formally barred from the social hall, either by posted notice or written notice, end of quote. Here is the same, the same area. See, this is the, the sign of congregation at the left. And here's the sign of all the people who are banished, many people. The dissidents took their case to the state Supreme Court, which backed up the Board of Elections, saying the dissidents didn't have solid evidence of intimidation. Several, like Shloma Tannenbaum and Herschel Laufer, recounted in affidavits that students yelled and cursed at them while the voting officials did nothing. Uh, and there was some from the boys uh, took uh, stones and throw it in the window and shoot in my face. Shloma Tannenbaum and Herschel Laufer recounted in affidavits that students yelled and cursed at them while the voting officials did nothing. Uh, and there was uh, some from the boys uh, took uh, stones and throw it in the window and shoot in my face. Yes. Uh, and uh, did you go to the police? I go to the police, they say. All of this is news to Orange County Sheriff Frank Bigger, who told the county legislature that in four years of monitoring elections at Curious Joel, there were only two incidents. Sheriff Bigger wrote, quote, at no time has it been reported to this office of any voter being denied his right to vote or enter the building. Further, 
Our deputies have maintained a peaceful presence for all voters concerned, end of quote. However, the dissidents did try to notify Sheriff Bigger of problems with the July 1994 election. After getting no help from the Monroe Town Board, the County Board of Elections, or the State Supreme Court, Mr. Waldman went to the county legislature. When you look at this, think about to your mind, what possible motivation could people have to sign a petition asking for the polling booth to be moved in the village of Curious Joel? And this year, the issue that actually brought me to this topic, 179 people went to vote absentee at the Board of Elections. A lot of people, really, 179 people drove 15 miles in each direction from Monroe to the Board of Elections to vote absentee. I went to the Board of Elections, filled out a freedom of information request for the absentee ballot applications. On all of them, where it says the number one of all the absentee, do we have to explain why you're voting absentee? This person writes, due to terror and religious discrimination. This person writes, just due to terror. Person writes, because of my religious belief, I'm being intimidated inside and outside of the polling place in this synagogue. Why would people drive 15 miles in each direction, write something like that, bound to aggravate their community? What possible motivation could they have? I can't imagine that there's just nothing going on there. And most of all, personally, I spoke to some of these people. They're not crazy people. They're not hoodlums. They're normal people with families who feel scared when they go to vote. And that is the most persuasive thing of all. The fact that they feel scared, the fact that there are people in this county who are frightened when they go to vote means we can't deny there is a problem in the village. Let's say accept that there's a problem there. The big question that I've heard a lot is, uh, Mr. Wright asked me in committee, Mr. Golden, as I mentioned it, uh, why is this our business? Mr. Golden noted in the rules committee that the administration has decided there's a lawsuit. We all know there's a lawsuit. The dissident community has filed a lawsuit asking for the polling place to be moved. They failed at the first level, now it's being appealed to the Supreme Court. Mr. Golden stated very clearly that this administration decided to take an active role in this lawsuit. We, these are the minutes of the rules committee meeting written down by the legislative staff. Mr. Golden says, said it isn't his duty simply to defend the Board of Elections decision. As with any litigation before this county, it is his obligation to determine the course of litigation. With respect to this, the lawsuit was in place when he came on board. The sentence is crucial. At that time, he reviewed it, the lawsuit, and made the independent decision to continue the lawsuit because he felt it was meritorious. This county decided, made an active decision, to side with the polling booths being where they are. To me, this is the shame of this county, and to me, it is the obligation of this legislature to go on the record saying that we disagree with the stand taken by the county attorney, by Mr. Golden. Certainly within their legal rights, but we also have the right to disagree. The real question is what we stand for here. We could be quiet. Throughout history, when the government oppresses people, there are a million reasons to be quiet. There's always an excuse. But this legislature has supported cutting O&R rates, mandate relief, the direct request to the New York State Assembly and Senate, another governmental body, buckshot, and many other issues that are important, but clearly not nearly as important as the fundamental right of people to vote without being harassed. In conclusion, it sounds like, I don't want to get melodramatic, and I know it sounds like a cliche, but people fought. People have fought for the right to vote. And not just their right to vote, everyone's right to vote, black and white and Jew and Christian and dissidents. And not just these dissidents, any dissidents. The lonely guy sitting in his living room who's like against his entire community that's why it's a democracy. He still has a right to vote without people throwing cold water on him, taking his hat off, yelling at him, going into a, a, a building where he's been expelled from. I know what's going on here. I know where this is heading. I know it was a block vote. I know a lot of people feel bound to that block vote. And I know, as I said, you have a million reasons to vote a certain way. I urge you to consider whether you come here as Republicans or legislators. Think of all the July 4th you've been to, Memorial Days, the Labor Days, the Veterans Days, and what we talked about, fairness and equality and freedom and democracy and how much we cherish it. And I said there are a million reasons to vote no, there's one reason to vote yes, and that's to live up to our rhetoric about justice and equality. Thank you. However, I'm going to read one, and I'm going to uh, read selective uh, pieces of the other letters. I'm just going to call the public's attention and the press's attention. <laughs> 
to these letters. One of the things that we have to do as a legislative body is to make good decisions. And even if that decision is that it's none of our business, we have to make a good decision. And we have to solicit input from everywhere. And emotionalism is not one of that criteria of making a good decision. And Mr. Baum, I just am so uh, happy to hear you talking about your love of country and people fighting and dying. But with all due respect, my dead husband was in Korea and he and a lot of men in this chamber served in the service and you did not. And I kind of resent that you, I resent that you, you also. just Thank a you. minute, excuse me, sir. I didn't talk when you were talking. Um, and, and I think that I have the right because my husband uh, went over there and fought for my rights as good as anybody else's. So I would appreciate your attention. First letter in this packet has to do with the, uh, with the request or a statement from the supervisor of the town of Monroe. Uh, dear Mrs. Murphy, I understand that a resolution will be presented to you at this evening's legislative session to change the polling locations in the village of Curious Joel. As you know, this matter has been and continues to be thoroughly investigated by the Monroe Town Board and the Orange County Board of Elections. The Orange County Board of Elections has upheld the, cur the current voting location. The New York State Supreme Court has upheld the current voting location. Now you and the legislature are being asked to overrule both the Board of Elections and the State Supreme Court. It is unfortunate that the Times Herald Record and some members of the Democratic Party have chosen to make this issue one of party partisan, partisan politics. Republican legislators voted along party lines not to move the polling place. Next, Waldman explained to the county's Human Rights Commission that voting rights abuses in Curious Joel is just the tip of the iceberg. The windows of dissidents' cars and houses are frequently broken with stones. Buses taking kids to dissident schools have been stoned. Undercover police who jumped out and arrested students of the Grand Rabbi's school can attest to that. Slashed tires are common as is graffiti. Just hours before his daughter's wedding, arsonists torched Waldman's car. The rabbi who was to marry her got threats from people claiming to be followers of the grand rabbi. Waldman had to find another rabbi on short notice. The daughter was escorted to her wedding by state police. In January, they struck again. Dissidents accused the village leaders of inciting the several hundred yeshiva students to act as their enforcers. What were these students doing out so late, on a school night, in a blizzard? In 1992, the Wall Street Journal reported that when Rabbi Yosef Hirsch accused village leaders of abusing, he was dubbed an informer. A 100-foot banner was hung atop the village municipal offices and shopping center, saying his name, quote, should be banished from the face of the earth, end of quote. Hundreds of men holding torches and screaming in Yiddish stoned his house. Last July, dissidents gathered to hear Rabbi Cheskel Roth from Brooklyn. 1,000 men rioted throwing rocks and eggs at both dissidents and state police. <laughs> Joseph Waldman's brother, Solomon, had his nose broken by a thrown rock. Later, Deputy Mayor Abraham Weider explained that under Jewish law, Roth shouldn't have come to Curious Joel. He forgot that under the laws of the United States, freedom of speech, of assembly, 
and of religious expression are all guaranteed. There are subtler forms of harassment. Dissidents claim the village board used the building codes it wrote to close their synagogue, but didn't apply the same codes to other buildings. Waldman asked the Human Rights Commission to probe 19 separate complaints about intolerance in Curious Joel. The commission voted to investigate, but its director, Kevin Barrett, said they didn't have the legal authority. Barrett is a county employee appointed by Executive Rampey. He declined to be interviewed for this program. State law clearly says it shall be the duty of the commission to investigate and resolve conflict between groups. Well, that, that is exactly the, the reason why I think it should be open, because uh, according to what, what Mr. Wardman presented to us, I do believe that his rights was violated in many a ways. Uh, well, it was religious, well, it was political, it was still his rights being violated. And I do believe that the human rights organization is there to protect humans' rights. What happened was Joe Waldman and the other dissident uh, members of the Curious Joel community complained to the Human Rights Commission, the Orange County Human Rights Commission. Unfortunately, the Human Rights Commission didn't live up to its name. Kevin Barrett, the executive director, told the other commissioners that they shouldn't get involved in this because they don't understand the culture. Well, I absolutely reject that argument. You know, everyone's allowed to have their culture in America. We, allow, we want cultures to flourish in America, but everyone has to obey the same rules. And one of those basic rules is everyone has a right to vote. To say that we shouldn't get involved there because we don't understand it or because they're different from us is patronizing to the people in Curious Joel. It's patronizing to anyone of any different culture. It's not an excuse to say they're different so they don't have to follow the same rules. Everyone has to follow and allow the right to vote. As far as after that, saying that the Human Rights Commission had no duty to get involved, that's a joke. The Human Rights Commission two months ago was involved in lobbying to change the name of the Port Jervis football team because they felt it was insulting to Native Americans. If they can get involved in the name of a football team, they could certainly get involved in protecting people's basic right to vote in the village of Curious Joel. If we're not going to protect all people, then I feel the whole... Um, Commit, com, uh, uh, Orange County Human Rights uh, Organization is useless. ...from government scrutiny, their ability to deliver a block vote. Village voting records from the 1992, 93, 94, and 95 elections reveal that the Satmar tend to overwhelmingly support or reject a candidate. Politicians know that Satmars in Curious Joel and Williamsburg, Brooklyn are an important statewide constituency and don't want to rock the boat. What needs to happen in Curious Joel, what should have happened in Curious Joel, is the legislature should have voted asking to change the polling place. The town of Monroe should change the polling place. It's unacceptable to have it in a building that part of the community has been banned from. And then the Human Rights Commission should be getting involved on in a whole host of issues, including the voting issue, to make sure that the minority in Curious Joel has the basic rights protected. Unfortunately, none of that has happened, and probably none of that will happen, because the Republicans in power in Orange County are more concerned with the Republican voting bloc from Curious Joel than they are concerned with basic voting rights.